to order. Welcome to meeting number 94 of the House of Commons Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs and International Development. Today's meeting is taking place in a hybrid format, pursuant to the standing orders, and therefore members are attending in person in the room, as well as remotely using the Zoom application. I'd like to make a few comments for the benefit of members uh, and our distinguished uh, witness. Before speaking, please do wait until I recognize you uh, by name. You may speak in the official language of your choice. Although this room is equipped with a powerful audio system, feedback events can occur. The most common cause of uh, sound feedback is an earpiece worn too close to a microphone. With regard to a speaking list, the committee clerk has uh, very kindly and graciously uh, done her best to maintain a consolidated order of speaking for all members. Now, uh, pursuant to Standing Order 1082 and the motion adopted by the Committee on Wednesday, November 8th, 2023, the Committee will once again resume its study of Canada's diplomatic capacity. Today, um, I have the great pleasure of uh, welcoming uh, Senator Beam here, uh, someone who uh, obviously requires no introduction to uh, any of the members. Um, I, I think it would be fair to say that in terms of uh, experience, uh, Senator Beam is uh, the breadth and uh, the, 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 the breadth of experience he has is really unsurpassed. So we're very, very grateful, Senator, that you made yourself available. Uh, I should also uh, acknowledge that your committee uh, did a very, very uh, comprehensive uh, review of uh, how to reform our uh, foreign service. So uh, we're very grateful you agreed to be here. Uh, you have five minutes for your uh, opening remarks, after which we will proceed to uh, questions from the members. Thank you, Senator. Bonjour and merci, Monsieur le Président, pour cette introduction chaleureuse, et merci pour l'invitation. Thank you very much for the invitation, Mr. Chairman, and it's a pleasure for me to be here today. I appear before the committee uh, from the ch as a chair of the Senatorial uh, Foreign Affairs Committee to uh, report back to your committee for our latest report, which was uh, tabled in the Senate as the 6th of December, entitled uh, More Than a Vocation, Canada Needs a 21st Century Foreign Service. Prior to this uh, Senatorial Committee's study, the last in-depth uh, examination of our Foreign Service was done in 1981 with the publication of the Royal Commission of Inquiry on the Status of our Foreign Affairs. Affairs Canada and the Canadian Force, uh, Foreign Service fit for purpose? Our answer is yes, but with several caveats. Over 16 meetings between April 2022 and June 2023, we were guided by 22 hours of testimony from expert witnesses ranging from current and former ministers, including one former prime minister, to retired practitioners, academics, younger serving officers, and members of employee-led networks within the department. The Senate committee also took productive fact-finding missions to Washington in December 2022 and to London Oslo and Berlin in September 2023. That's because several of our major allies, including Germany, Norway, the United Kingdom, and the United States, have also undertaken, or are in the process of undertaking, reviews of their own foreign services. We made 29 recommendations designed to strengthen the already considerable abilities of Canada's foreign service. The result of our study, launched in the Senate before the announcement of the Department's own Future of Diplomacy Review is an excellent and comprehensive report, but of course I'm biased. The Senate Committee's recommendations span areas including organizational structure and coherence, recruitment, career management, and conditions of foreign service. Among our concerns is staffing. Uh, the Foreign Service is still feeling the effects of a suspension in recruitment between 2009 and 2019. Recent events have also underscored the importance of a foreign service that can respond with agility to emergencies, including evacuating Canadians from conflict zones such as Lebanon, Afghanistan, Ukraine, Sudan, and Gaza. 
However, we heard that the department's surge capacity should be increased. That's why the Senate Committee strongly recommends that Global Affairs Canada run an annual entry-level Foreign Service Officer recruitment campaign to fill vacancies and create that needed surge capacity. It should also recruit more mid-career professionals from other government departments and from outside government altogether. Our study revealed that generalist knowledge is prioritized over specific thematic expertise due in part to some of the staffing challenges. Russia and China will continue to hold the world's attention for years. That means Russia and China specialists, people with understanding of the languages, cultures, and goals of these countries and governments are invaluable. This is why the Senate Committee urges Global Affairs Canada to increase investment in foreign language training and provide opportunities for Canada-based staff trained in a foreign language to maintain their foreign language skills throughout their careers. This also speaks to our recommendation on the equal use of French and English within the department and to ensure that ab initio official language training is maintained for new hires. The conditions of foreign service could also be improved. The foreign service directives provide for allowances and benefits for staff serving abroad and because they have not been reviewed since 1981, the Senate Committee strongly urges a complete modernization of the foreign service directives to ensure that they are adapted to the current and evolving realities faced by Canada's public servants. What happens around the world impacts us here at home, from economic security to physical security, and Canada's Foreign Service, through a broad range of duties, is at the forefront of mitigating negative, negative impacts and taking advantage of opportunities. This goes to the heart of the Committee's first recommendation, that Global Affairs Canada must do a far better job of communicating to Canadians what it and the Foreign Service specifically does. There is hard work ahead, and what the Senate Committee recommended is not the end of it. We did not even get into costing issues. We need to ensure that our talented people have the tools, skill sets, funding, and consistent nonpartisan political support to do their jobs. Again, thank you for the invitation to be here today. I'll be pleased to answer any questions you might have. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator. It was uh, just brought to my attention that your mic is having some uh, technical uh, problems. So if you would be gracious enough to uh, use uh, mic number 16, we'd be... Uh, so you mean no one heard what I said? <laughs> no, we heard it all. Oh, okay. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Thank you kindly, Senator. Uh, so first up, uh, we go to uh, MP Abel Tafe. Uh, you have six minutes. Merci, Mr. President. Uh, bienvenue. Uh, Thank you, Chairman. And welcome to our committee. The uh, report, and you, as you mentioned, that there are certain areas hasn't been tackled or wasn't tackled in, in your report. One of them is justice. And um, as justice is not referenced in Canada Future of Diplomacy Discussion paper, what efforts should the department uh, adapt or the government adapt to make sure that uh, we uphold international justice and uh, accountability efforts? Uh, thank you uh, for the question, uh, Mr. Abu Taif. Um, could I just ask you to be a, a little bit more precise? By justice, do you mean legal services within the department or do you mean public international law? Public international law. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, you'll see that there is a recommendation there that the legal services uh, provided in the department be retained. Uh, there have over the years been, uh, been various uh, ideas floated to have the Department of Justice handle uh, these, uh, these particular issues more directly. So, for example, extradition and, uh, and issues like that. But I think as, uh, as recent activity has shown, particularly with issues involving the International Court of Justice in The Hague or the International Criminal Court, it's of great value to have a functioning legal bureau or in fact perhaps even more than one because there are also trade lawyers uh, in the department. It is a combined department, as you know, uh, that, uh, that handle uh, questions, legal questions that could come up in the context of negotiating free trade agreements. So I think those services are there and there is also then, of course, a component that is consular in, uh, in providing assistance. You've also mentioned the surge capacity uh, and the needs for 
um, uh, for extra uh, tools, let's, let's call it, or, or uh, support needed. So uh, does the department have or uh, uh, enough of, of those tools that, that could be uh, uh, useful to support further international justice and accountability? Okay. Um, do, do we have the tools? <clears throat> I think the tools are there. I think they need to be refined, and I think there also has to be um, a way to ensure that when there is uh, a crisis, if Canadians need to be evacuated out of, uh, out of Sudan, for example, out of Gaza, out of Israel, right after October uh, 7th, that, that surge capacity is there. I go back a little bit to my, uh, my own experience, if you'll indulge me, Chair. Uh, in 2006, I uh, chaired the task force on the evacuation of Canadians out of Lebanon. And we learned a lot through that because we could not, like the United States, send in the Navy to pick up our citizens. We had to get very creative, and we developed some best practices at that time that have been refined, including during the pandemic. A recent article, uh, I'm going to move in a bit of a different direction. A um, recent article talking about uh, direct foreign investment uh, in decline in Canada in the context of how much we lose in versus how much we're gaining. So we are in a net loss as far as that balance between what we invest outside and what get invested in Canada. How do you see the future diplomacy um, uh, role in making sure, first of all, we uphold to the balance or to the surplus, and the second is to examine um, uh, it's a concern, to be honest with you, if, uh, if investments are not coming, international investments are not coming our way the way it should be. And I believe diplomacy has a role in this case, if you don't mind to... Um, to uh, well, you're absolutely comment. right. Uh, diplomacy does have a, a, a role there. And in fact, the Canadian Trade Commissioner Service predates the creation of the old Department of External Affairs. It goes back to the 1880s. So at most of our missions uh, abroad, and certainly at... Uh, at, at headquarters, there is a component uh, that, uh, that looks at uh, trade promotion, but also at investment. And under the previous government, that was changed to make it two-way investment. So uh, there is a dedicated core that, uh, that works on that. Uh, I have a, a final uh, question. One of the recommendations from the witnesses on the report that called for establishing um, an ambassador for international justice. Uh, what do you think of that suggestion? Do you support it, yes or no, and why? Okay, well, as you know, I'm, I'm uh, not with the government. Uh, and at some point, the government will have to respond to our, uh, to our report, and that is not one of our recommendations. And there's a reason why it's not one of our recommendations. I think, you know, you can have ambassadors, designated ambassadors for different functions. Climate change is a is a good example. In the past, there's been an ambassador for religious freedom uh, and, uh, and the like. But uh, for justice, if you have, uh, in my view, uh, a functioning cadre of lawyers well-versed in public international law and in treaty law and international humanitarian law, I don't see how you would, why you would need to have one person kind of covering all of this. It would be, uh, I think, too much. So uh, we next go to uh, MP Oliphant. You have six Merci, minutes. Monsieur le Président. Je commence avec un grand... Thank you, Chair. I'd like to uh, greet my uh, students uh, from St. Vincent. St. Vincent, pleasure to have them aboard today. With us. We will be on our best behavior. Uh, thank you, Senator for being with us today. Uh, I've read your report. It's very helpful. It's a portion of um, our study on, uh, on the future of diplomacy because the human resources capacity is one portion. I want to ask a little bit about uh, so the, around the recommendation number 26, which is about uh, rotational, non-rotational staff, which also gets us a little bit into generalists and specialists. And that balance between those um, people normally housed um, here in Ottawa who become content experts or uh, sometimes functional experts versus those who, are, those who are trained to go to the field and 